Picnic Table Talk, day number 27. Andrew Capone from Horse Racing Nation. Caleb Knight, my partner today. Caleb, we got a beautiful card here, beautiful day. Uh, two stakes races today. First, I want to congratulate you on that one in the stakes race yesterday, uh, getting home at quite the price. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. He uh, did better than even I expected. Uh, Zacta came in just the way we sort of drew it up. Our three horse that we both liked ended up uh, getting up for second late. Pace didn't set up quite the way it looked, but definitely good to get a price home. I know you were live as also in the pick five for some monster payouts. Unfortunately, I know you didn't cash, but we do have big six carryover today. Over 150,000, I believe, in the pool. Two stakes races on this card. Nice day under the oak trees. Fans are coming in. We do have a giveaway day today, so we should see a little bit more than normal. I believe it's a long sleeve t-shirt. Um, but let's start off two stakes race number one on the dirt. Race number eight going one and an eighth on the dirt. We don't see this race, this distance too often um, on the weekdays. It's more of a weekend type of distance. Um, let's talk about the, the track trends report from Horse Racing Nation, available free every single day. Horses going nine furlongs, 53% wire to wire, on or within one length of the lead. So definitely an opportunity to play a forward placing horse here. Where did you land? Yeah, I think that angle is a good one to consider when looking at this race because it doesn't seem like there's an abundance of speed on. So I definitely didn't want to go for any horse that I thought was going to be too far off the pace. I think that the number two, Misty Bales, your likely leader, but I actually ended up on the one horse to her immediate inside, Army Wife. So this is a horse that I think has subtly improved a little bit going from her three-year-old to four-year-old season. I thought she ran fine in the Molly Pitcher last time out. Search results is clearly a cut above and would be an overwhelming favorite in this field today. I thought that that trip wasn't probably the one that she really wanted. So I think she needs to be a little more forward than she was in that race. I think that coming from you only had two horses beat at the second call, that's probably not the recipe for success there, especially at Monmouth where speed tends to carry. I would expect Gaffleone to get her a little more forwardly placed like he did two back in that Thistledowns race. And she showed that she can compete here. She has two wins at this distance. She's faced some of these before and always shows up. So I, I kind of like Army Wife here at more of a mid-range kind of a price. I'm going to be hunting for a price here. I'm going to play the bias. I'm a bias player. I'm going to stick to it. I think the horse is going to get on the lead and keep going. We spoke to Tom Amos on the Saratoga Morning Report this morning. You can see that every single day on Horse Racing Nation YouTube. Tom was very clear on what was going on. They were going to the front, and they were going to try to keep on going. We asked him about why Trevor McCarthy was up. He said, Trevor's worked this horse three times now. I love when I see that uh, a, a jockey working the horse three times coming into a race like this. Um, Trevor's been hot late in the card, won the last two, the last two days in a row, on a massive price yesterday, 24 to 1 on the surf. Um, this changes the dirt here, and I think there's an opportunity for this horse to go and keep on going. We'll go back and look at that Indiana Grand. Um, rubbing really against the bias there. Um, the bias was pretty mid-pack to closer that day. Indiana Grand is usually speed on routes. It was actually a little further back that day. Um, they were trying to tighten up the track. I think there's an opportunity for the horse to get to the front. Those uh, two back, those numbers two back and three back, really put this right in the mix on time for him. This is an opportunity to catch a price in this pick six carryover. Um, I'm going to be spread here, though. I'm not going to single the two. Um, I'm going to be one, two. And let's talk about this horse, number four, leader of the band. Last time out, you know, second right behind search results, three back. You take a look at this four horse. Yeah, so that's a horse that gave me a little bit of trouble because I wasn't really sure what to do with her. She ran well in the Molly Pitcher, actually beating my top pick, Army Wife. I think she had a slightly more favorable trip that day, being able to save all the ground and was a little bit more forwardly placed. So I do think she fits in here. Uh, I guess my only question is how short of a price do I want on a horse that, in my mind, that's kind of the one race she has that does make her a contender in here. Prior to that, she's been uh, keeping some slightly cheaper company, but looking back, she does have some races that fit. Back at the Monmouth Oaks, the uh, Delaware Oaks, she even showed up in the Cotillion and ran respectively. So she's one that I think due to some lower profile connections with John Service shipping up from the Mid-Atlantic Circuit, might just get overlooked and we know Rosario can pull off the upset on these kind of horses. So that's a horse that is not one of my top selections, but probably will make some of my tickets. I think this is a horse that you have to watch the replay. Watch that replay in the last race. Um, the break was just awkward as hell. Um, Frankie Pennington doesn't come for the mount. I think it's a big upgrade for Rose area there, and one that I have to use on my pick six tickets today, especially with this carryover. We have a second stakes race here. We're going to move on to race number 10. We're going to move over to the turf now. Um, on these turf sprints, uh, everybody I talk to keeps on saying, you got to get to the front, you got to get to the front. 
The track transit board doesn't agree with that. I think you can win from absolutely anywhere on these first sprints. A little bit earlier in the meet, we saw more horses coming from that mid-pack and closing. A little bit more forward in the last week, but I don't think you need to be on the front here. Um, that being said, two-year-olds, five and a half at Saratoga. On my pick six ticket, I'm going to do something which everybody hates to do. I'm going to single a horse in the last. Um, I think this is an opportunity for me to gain value and spread in other places and single on this last race. I'm going to be on the three, being a chalk eater, second time starter for Chad Brown. Ox Oxymore, where were you? I wish I had something more original to say, but unfortunately we are in agreement on the chalk this race. Oxymoron looks really tough in here. To your point about the track trends, I do think that for the opening weekend or arguably first two weeks of the meet, the turf sprint seems to be playing a little more off the pace. It seems like that's at least gotten more fair, if not actually switched towards a little more speed. We saw speed doing well yesterday. Saez had a wire-to-wire -wire winner. A couple other horses did very well on the front end on these turf sprints. There is a lot of speed in here, but it, you also, at least sometimes I wonder how often do these turf sprints really melt, especially when they're two-year-old horses that by and large haven't really learned to pass or other horses a lot of the times. So I think Oxymoron is probably just too good for this bunch. Was a runaway winner in debut, gets privately purchased from Michael Dubb immediately entered into a stakes race after going to Chad Brown's barn. So this is a horse that I'll probably anchor my pick six around, and I'm not going to spend much money trying to beat this favorite. Let's talk about the wild card in this race. And I've spoken to three or four handicappers in the last two days, and everybody's sitting there scratching their heads about it. The number five horse. What is going on here? Ellis Park Shipper coming up here. You know, if you look at the speed figures, they're, they're not necessarily there yet, but very impressive at five and a half on the turf before. Um, you know, Hernandez doesn't ship. We get Ricardo Santana Jr. Um, Asmus in these type of races can pretty, pre be pretty good. Actually, uh, Private Creed's beat Six Mission last thing, who I believe came back and won last race. So, um, what did you think of this five horse here? This sort of mix of a 10 to one. I think this is gonna be a very, you get longer than that. But I think it's an opportunity to you possibly use in your uh, exactives or possibly try to get out trifectas if you're there. Yeah, I think this is a great horse to use underneath and wouldn't be a total surprise to come in on top, to be honest with you. I, I think that if, if you're of the opinion this race does come back to the off the pace runners, because there certainly is a lot of speed in here, I think this is a horse you would have to use that. Who showed a lot of maturity for a two year old to be able to break from an inside post, still be able to stalk the pace, and then kick clear turning for home. This is a horse that did not take a ton of money in debut, Asmussen not known for his first time runners on the turf, but this horse was clearly uh, well meant that day, and connections think highly enough to wheel him back into the Skidmore here, so this is one that I think if you're looking for an off the pace runner, I would definitely give this horse a long look. Last comment from you, the other Chad, the eighth, what'd you think? I think the same argument applies for the other Ellis Park horse we just talked about, that if if you're going to take an off-the-pace runner, I think that the other Chad is another one that you could look at here. I would maybe defer to Private Creed simply because I think you're going to get three times the price. Uh, the other Chad angle is one that I think enough people are aware of now that that horse is going to be on some tickets, that horse is going to get bet. It is Klarevich. Uh, Kodiak is a very good turf sprint influence here, so the pedigree makes sense. Horse past other horses in debut, lots to like there. Um, you know, the first two horses that finished that maiden race were six and a half clear of the rest of the field. So, I mean, I think the horse makes sense. I'm personally of the opinion that I don't want to have two or three horses, including an eight to five. They're all short prices. So that's one I'll probably just take a shot that let him beat me, but certainly could. I'm with you there. For me, single three in the last for my pick six. Nice pick six carry over here on this beautiful Friday, Alabama weekend. Two stakes, races number eight and race number ten. Good luck with your bets today.